in the last class we have discussed in detail about types of bonding there are totally six types of chemical bonding that is ionic bond or ionic bonding covalent bond or covalent bonding coordinate bond or coordinate bonding likewise there are few more types of bonds that is metallic bond hydrogen bond along with these two there are two more bondings such as sigma bond and pi bonds and also we have studied in detail about the ionic bond or ionic bonding so according to the definition of ionic bond or a ionic bonding ionic bond is a bond which is formed by the complete transformation of one or more electrons from the valence cell of electro positive atom towards the valence cell of electro negative atom in such a way that both the atoms attains the nearest noble gas configuration so as ionic bond is formed by the transformation of one or more electron from the valence cell of electro positive atom to the valence cell of electro negative atom we have already discussed about the formation of sodium chloride so today i am going to deal about the extension of the ionic bonding related with the born papers so today i am going to give details about the born papers cycle and its construction during the formation of a ionic compound or a ionic crystal with the help of a anion and cations coming to the born haber's cycle the study of changes of heat during the formation of ionic compound with the help of a thermochemical equation is called born haber's cycle or born haber's cycle is defined as the study of changes of heat the study of changes of heat during the formation of ionic compound with the help of a thermochemical equation is called born haber's cycle coming to the formation of born haber's cycle for a crystalline compound like sodium chloride here in the formation of a ionic compound there are many steps involved in the formation of a ionic compound today i am going to explain a detail about the various steps involved in the formation of a ionic compound by taking an example of sodium chloride following are the important steps involved so first one is conversion of metallic sodium into gaseous sodium atoms the first step is conversion of metallic sodium into gaseous sodium atoms the second step is dissociation of chlorine molecule into chlorine atoms third step is 
conversion of gaseous sodium atoms into sodium ions fourth one is conversion of gaseous chlorine atoms into its ions called chloride ions lastly the fifth step is the combination of gaseous sodium ions and gaseous chloride ions into a solid crystal so these are the five important steps involved in the formation of a ionic compound that is conversion of metallic sodium into gaseous sodium atoms dissociation of chlorine molecule into chlorine atoms conversion of gaseous sodium atoms into sodium ions conversion of gaseous chlorine atoms into chloride ions then the combination of sodium ion and chloride ion forming a solid sodium chloride so coming to the first step conversion of metallic sodium into gaseous sodium atoms for the conversion of a metallic sodium into a gaseous sodium atom we have to supply certain amount of energy so that the solid sodium atom is converted into a gaseous sodium atoms so here the energy required for the conversion of one mole of a solid sodium into gaseous sodium atom is called sublimation energy that is for the conversion of a solid sodium into a gaseous sodium atom whatever the amount of energy required is going to be called as a sublimation energy and here the sublimation energy is represented by s that is when sodium to a solid sodium when we supply a certain amount of energy in the form of a sublimation energy a solid sodium will be converted into a gaseous sodium atoms so here na treating with the sublimation energy n the solid sodium will be converted into a gaseous sodium atom here s is denoted by sublimation energy coming to the second step that is dissociation of chlorine molecule into chlorine atoms the amount of energy required for the dissociation of one mole of gaseous chlorine into its atoms is called dissociation energy the amount of energy required for the dissociation of one mole of gaseous chlorine into its atom is called dissociation energy and it is denoted by t that is one mole of chlorine that is cl2 which is in the form of a gaseous state by supplying a dissociation energy called d here a chlorine molecule which is in the form of a gaseous state is converted into a gaseous chlorine atoms as we know here d is going to be indicated by a dissociation energy and the dissociation energy evidently the energy required to produce a single gaseous 
chlorine atom and it would be d by 2 for the dissociation of 1 mole of chlorine into 2 atoms of chlorine whatever the amount of energy required would be d by 2 that is half of the dissociation energy is required for the conversion of one atom of chlorine from the chlorine molecule. Coming to the uh, third step that is conversion of gaseous sodium atoms into sodium ions. As we know for the conversion of a sodium atom into sodium ion we have to supply a certain amount of energy. Here the amount of energy required to convert 1 mole of gaseous sodium atom into a sodium ion in a gaseous state is called ionization energy. Whatever the amount of energy required to convert 1 mole of gaseous sodium atom into a sodium ion in the gaseous state is called ionization energy and it is represented as IE that is IE indicates ionization energy or simply it is represented by IP that is ionization potential. So here when a gaseous sodium atom to the gaseous sodium atom when we supply a certain amount of energy that is ionization energy IE sodium atom which is in the form of a gaseous state is converted into its ion that is Na plus with the loss of one electron. So when a atomic sodium is subjected to a certain amount of energy called ionization energy, sodium atom loses an electron forming a sodium ion that is sodium cation is formed. So here IE is simply represented or denoted by ionization energy. Coming to the fourth step regarding the conversion of gaseous chlorine atom into chloride ions. For the conversion of a gaseous chlorine atoms into its ions during the conversion of a chlorine atom into a chloride ion certain amount of energy will be given out and that energy itself is going to be called as Ea that is electron affinity value. The amount of energy released the amount of energy released when one mole of gaseous chlorine atom is converted into chloride ion and is called electron affinity represented by Ea. When chlorine atom is going to be added by one electron it forms a chloride ion with the release of energy called Ea which is represented as electron affinity. Coming to the last step that is combination of gaseous sodium ion and chloride ion into a solid sodium chloride a crystalline compound. This step involves the combination of gaseous sodium ions 
and gases chloride ions to give one mole of a crystalline sodium chloride whatever the amount of energy released during the formation of a crystalline compound from its ions is called lattice energy the amount of energy released during the formation of a crystalline compound with the help of a anion and cation is called lattice energy and it is denoted by u or simply u not that is when a gaseous sodium cation combines with a gaseous chloride anion during the combination of a cation and anion certain amount of energy will be changes and that change in the energy is simply called as heat of formation and it is represented as delta hf when a sodium cation and a chloride anion combines to form a solid sodium chloride certain amount of energy changes will be takes place and that change of heat energy is represented by delta hf and whatever the amount of energy released is going to be called as a lattice energy and it is represented by u here u indicates lattice energy and delta indicates heat of formation so coming to the delta hf that is heat of formation the heat of formation is defined as the heat of formation that is delta hf is defined as the amount of energy released when one mole of a crystalline substance is formed heat of formation is defined as the amount of energy released when one mole of a crystalline substance is formed by its anions and cations for example when a gaseous sodium cation combines with a gaseous chloride anion heat of formation that is delta hf which is represented as the overall changes in the heat energy and during the changes of certain amount of heat energy that is delta hf a sodium chloride a solid crystalline compound is formed in the today's class we have seen the details about the born haber cycle as the born haber cycle is defined as the study of changes of heat during the formation of a ionic compound with the help of a thermochemical equation itself is going to be called as a born haber cycle born haber cycle is specially applied for the formation of a crystalline compound so for the formation of a crystalline compound with the help of a anion and cations there involves various steps and those steps are the conversion of metallic sodium into 
a gaseous sodium atoms here for the conversion of a solid sodium into a gaseous sodium atoms certain amount of energy is required and that energy is called as sublimation energy and it is represented as S. Then coming to the second step involved in the Born-Haber's cycle for the formation of a crystalline compound is dissociation of a chlorine atoms which is in the form of a gaseous state. The dissociation of a gaseous chlorine molecule into chlorine atoms in gaseous state is called as dissociation and the amount of energy required to dissociate one mole of gaseous chlorine into gaseous chlorine atom is represented by capital T and here we have to note that the amount of energy required for the formation of one atom of gaseous chlorine is simply half of the dissociation energy that is d by 2 the amount of energy required for the dissociation of one chlorine atom is simply a d by 2 that is half of the dissociation energy then coming to the third step for the formation of a ionic compound that is conversion of a gaseous sodium atoms into sodium ions here for the conversion of a atomic sodium from the gaseous state into a sodium ion for this step we have to supply certain amount of energy to the gaseous sodium atom and that energy is called as ionization energy and it is denoted by capital IE or ionization potential that is IP. Coming to the fourth step that is formation of a gaseous chlorine atom into chloride ion. For the conversion of a gaseous chlorine atom into its ion, certain amount of energy will be released out and that energy is simply called as electron affinity and it is indicated by Ea. Then coming to the last step that is combination of a gaseous sodium ion and chloride ion for the formation of a crystalline compound that is sodium chloride is called as a combination of gaseous sodium ion and chloride ions and during the formation of a solid sodium chloride with the help of its gaseous ions certain amount of energy changes will be takes place and the change of energy during the formation of a solid compound is called as delta HF and whatever the total amount of energy released during the formation of a sodium chloride is called as lattice energy and it is denoted by capital U. Here the delta HF is nothing but a heat of formation that is heat of formation is defined as the amount of energy released when one mole of a crystalline compound is formed the overall changes may be represented as a gaseous sodium ion combines with a gaseous chloride ion 
with the change of delta hf that is changes in the heat of formation the various steps involved in the formation of a sodium chloride with the help of a born hebers cycle so in my next class i am going to give details about the diagrammatical representation of a born hebers cycle and i am going to see some of the examples regarding the calculation of lattice energy and the calculation of heat of changes that is delta hf during the formation of a ionic compound